Welcome, fellow masters! My name is Musaki, and today we are going over the next episode of Clairvoyance the X. A look into the future for the month of Hep for Fate Grand Order. And today we're talking about July, which is anniversary month. So we got a lot to cover and not much time to do it. So, let's just jump into it. Now before we get too far ahead, I do want to take a moment to thank our sponsor for this video, Buy E. Once again, our friends at Buy E are back to offer you guys a lovely chance to get some merch from Japan. Currently, with the pandemic, there's been quite a bit of travel restrictions and shipping restrictions, meaning you can't just go to Japan freely or some other countries as freely as you used to. With Buy E, you can bring Japan to you. Here's how it works. You go to Buy E website and you choose from the plethora of places that you can order from. Whether that be the Japanese version of Yahoo or a local shop, you can order your favorite snacks, food, models, figures, even doujins, right here. And Buy E will ship that all in one single package directly to your address. And if any of that sounds good to you, well, you're in luck. If you click the link down in the description and in the pinned comment down below, you'll actually get 2,000 yen off of your first purchase. That's a great deal. So what are you waiting for? If there's something you need to get from Japan right now or something you've had your eye on, definitely click that link down below. Take advantage of that 2,000 yen off your first purchase and let me know what you got here. Because trust me, you won't regret giving them a chance. Now back to the video. We're gonna start things off with going over the most important thing that we have to know about Fate Grand Order 5th Anniversary. That's right, FGO has been going on for five years in NA. A long time and a big milestone for sure. And Lasengo and Aniplex are doing everything they can to make sure that we are showered and celebrated for sticking with the game for so long. So let's get into exactly what to expect here. First up, there more than likely will be a special broadcast We Tree campaign that will be going on. Now, when this showed up the first time in Japan, they actually did some fun little things on the live showing that extended and increased the amount of Saint Courts to 90, which is absurd. We've never received 90 Saint Courts from a retweet campaign. That's 310 summons. Excellent. What else we got going on? As you can see here, the 10 great campaigns. This is the 10 part step campaign that we always have for every new year and every anniversary this was actually a doozy we have the consecutive login bonus as you know 10 million qp 100,000 friend points 10 golden foes 10 golden apples 10 silver hp and attack foes and 10 summoning tickets just log in from seven days when this start you can get all those nice freebies especially those summoning tickets at the end. But you also have a cumulative bonus as well. The first day, 200 mana prisms. The second and third, gold attack and HP foes, one each. And on the fourth and final day, a rare mana prism. Very good and very nice that they're starting to give out rare mana prisms, especially because they're loading up that rare mana prism shop with a lot of stuff lately. Thanks, Da Vinci. The next two parts are gonna be pretty good and pretty standard. Half AP for all Ember Gathering, Trader Field, and Treasure Vault quests. So perfect time for farming, and even better, great and super success rate increased to five times. You heard me, five times, five times, five times, five times, five times, great and super success rate. That is fantastic. Seriously, can you dig that? Sucka, perfect time to level up your servants if you haven't already. Especially if you roll for the anniversary servant, but we'll get more on her a little bit later. The fourth and fifth steps are more actual quality of life changes. Command code and second archive storage has been increased, which is great, but also you're gonna start seeing extra missions being updated. Super easy, daily missions will be in your game, where it'll be clearing 80 quests a certain amount of time to get 10 mana prisms each. On top of that, they're gonna get all these other extra missions. Remember, if I remind you, clearing strengthening quests, clearing interludes, clearing free quests, and because there's been more strengthenings, more character interludes, and more free quests, you get an additional 10 for each of these. So if you caught up to all of this, you got a lot of cores waiting for you. 
Number six, we have something pretty big. We have unlimited master missions being introduced here because they're increasing the friend point slot by five. I hope you've gotten on to the magic number here. Five additional friend slots given to all masters regardless of their master level. And that is great. To order, in order for you to get those filled up, however, if you increase the number of friends or followers, by one to five, you get a total of 100 mana prisms and three summoning tickets. Super easy quests that you only have, actually, no, you have a couple of weeks to finish out. That's so easy, anyone can do it. Seriously. And if you're having trouble finding friends, just go ahead and come to our Discord. The link is in the description. And go to the friend code section of the Discord. You'll find plenty of people willing to friend you there. Next up, we have something a little bit confusing at first, but when you break it down, it's not that bad. Seven is command code changes. So you might have noticed if you use the code removers, they actually take the QP away that you use to put it, and you don't get the key that you use to unlock the code card to begin with. So now when you use the remover, you get all that back, and slotting a command code and unlocking a command code is all one action now instead of having to unlock and Put, uh, put the code on the card. So a little bit of uh, quality of life change there, which I very much like. Less steps makes this uh, a lot less complicated. And then we have the big boy thing, more servant strengthening quests. Who are these servants getting the strengthening quests? Well, let's find out. Day one, we have Phantom of the Opera and Brynhild. So you actually notice they're both getting skill upgrades here with Brynhild getting the better of the skills with an MP battery being added on to her skill. Very nice for her to have that, especially with coming servers coming in the future. Like it. Phantom of the Opera skill, I, I'm happy that Phantom of the Opera got touched, but in my opinion, it's not the best. Still, if you have it, just get the free strength request so you can just get same course later. Day two, we have Darius and Mama Raiko. Darius receiving a fantastic buff to his gut skill, not only lowering the cooldown, but also lowering the buster resistance of all enemies. That is a great skill to have. Not a noble phantasm, this is a skill on demand. Reduces the buster performance of the enemy. That's great. And Mamo Raiko finally got her noble phantasm upgraded with now the ability to reduce the critical attack chance by 20%, increasing the damage for a noble phantasm as well. So she's gonna hit harder with the noble phantasm, but unfortunately, she still is playing catch up with Arjuna Altar, which is currently one of the best Berserkers in this game at the moment. Arguably one of the best units in the game. But if you have Mama Ranko, definitely get this buff. It's gonna make her a lot more effective, but she's got a long way to go to catch up to the way that Berserkers are heading in the future. Day three, we see David and Consort U with their buffs. David actually had an increase to his Noble Phantasm, which also creates the giant trait. So now the Goliath Slayer will be able to slay giants as he should. But now that this is traded created, it will be added retroactively to enemies and some servers that fit that profile. And it also increased that damage for his Noble Phantasm, so very nice there. As for Consort U, we have her buff block being increased to three turns, which is very good considering her Noble Phantasm actually removes all of her buffs. Still, in my opinion, one of the worst things that can happen to you in a meta where we buff up our servants quite a bit before Noble Phantasming. But hey, at least you got the skill to be able to take care of it for three turns. Day number four brings Neza and Arjuna buffs. Now Neza gets their Noble Phantasm buff, which brings up the damage, but also puts burn to the enemies for a select amount of turns. Now I kinda like for an AOE servant to kill all of my enemies in the first go, especially if I'm farming with them. But if you're dealing with a tougher enemy or a tougher series of enemies that's gonna stick around for a few turns, the burn does add up quite a bit. So it's not bad, but I'm basically here for that MP damage increase. Very nice. But Arjuna here got a big buff to his MP battery skill. Not only did it decrease by two turns for the skill cooldown, it now charges his Noble Phantasm gauge by 10% for five turns. 
Wow, that is really good. So this skill not only gives him a 25% battery, recovers HP for five turns, gives him critical stars for five turns, it also gives him MP for five turns. He literally has a smaller version of Merlin's MP on him. It's absurd. <laughs> Day number five brings some really good buffs to Caster Gilgamesh and Musashi Miyamoto. For Caster Gilgamesh, this actually increases his double phantasm and does some fantastic things there. Not only are we increasing the damage with this buff, but you're also increasing the party's critical damage by 30% for three turns. That is quite a bit. And yeah, that is something that happens after the enemy's dead, but if you're going into waves, that means the critical damage of the party is going to be increased, and if you have a lot of stars, or you're able to generate a lot of stars, which he does help with, it's insane. Making Caster Gilgamesh even better. I'm not even sure if he needed this buff, honestly, but it is very good that he got it. Now, for Musashi Miyamoto, Carnival Phantasm damage has been increased as well. So it's doing a crap load of damage, but on top of that, increases his own MP damage for one turn, which activates first, even higher, and in addition, deals 150% extra damage to Alter Egos or Moon Cancer enemies. Wow, that sounds like quite a bit of enemies that we're facing. Seriously though, storyline-wise, it makes sense. The Alien God incorporates Alter Egos into their strategy, so this is the perfect perfect skill for that, but that also means that this isn't the last time that we are going to see Musashi Miyamoto in the story. And last but certainly not least, we have four buffs to talk about. That's right, the last day, day six, there are four buffs. It's not seven days like normal, no, this is four for the final day. And we're starting off with Q and Herc, but I'll start with Q, our favorite doggo, first. Now it's not just the guts, but it is, increases his own attack based on his own remaining HP for three turns. Now this is dangerous, considering that unless you leveled up this skill, unless you didn't level up this skill, 1000 HP, you're not going to be able to see the most benefit out of this. Uh, I, I worry, I worry because this is not consistent. The reason why that Hijikata gets a little better with this, he has ways to revive himself, to keep himself alive, and make sure he doesn't die. And yes, I know it is extremely hard to kill Ku. It is super hard to kill him. But in my opinion, having it so that his attack is based off of how much HP is left is dangerous. Because that means you have to play with his health pool, and you can't consistently do that every time. It's a nice buff. It's just, I wish it was a little bit different and a little bit better because it, it does increase his damage quite a bit, but man, I don't like that HP tie. Our first Berserker also got his first increase. That's right, my friends. This is the first buff to Heracles in five years of this game existing. It is to his gut skill, which again, a normal guts, but turns into indomitable, which grants gut status that's stackable with other guts. And when his guts is activated, he actually gets a buster performance for 20% for five turns? Are you kidding me? That's a crazy buff. Because first of all, that guts is gonna proc. Second of all, the fact that the guts is stackable with other guts means it's stackable with his bond CE. Means it's stackable when someone else gives him guts. It is insane, and I'm pretty sure this is the reason why Vlad has his guts stackable as well. Such a good skill. Such a great skill. If you have heard, man, this just made him even better. The rich get richer, I guess. Then we have the next two. We have Emiya Archer himself. Now, this is strange. This is the first time that one skill has been buffed more than once. That's right. This is his Hawkeye skill getting buffed again. So not only is it a rainbow buff for one turn, he actually has the option now to change his card of his Noble Phantasm from Buster to Arts. Wow, I can't believe it. Space Ishtar taught Emiya the exact same skill that she knows, except from Arts to Buster. Now, everyone may know, but we all thought it was weird that Emiya had a Buster Noble Phantasm with a Triple Arch deck and an Arts buff in the beginning. So it's a little hard to make him sing, 
but now that he has the option to either turn his Noble Phantasm Buster or Arts, it gives you extra leeway and more options in certain strategies. And of course, lines him up more with Chloe Von Iceberg and Amia Alter. I love this change. I'm glad you're giving it to more people, and hopefully we'll see some other people use this type of skill later on. But let's talk about Artoria Pendragon. The first saber is actually getting a fantastic buff to her mana burst. It's turning a Dragon Reactor Core B. So, it increases her noble phantasm damage on top of increasing buster damage, and also changes all the command cards to buster for a turn. Whew, that is a crazy versatile skill. So you're either turning every single one of your cards into buster to take advantage of your buster performance, or you're using a noble phantasm for increased damage. Now my only critique with this type of skill is that because each of these only lasts a turn, you're never really going to fully take advantage of both of them at the same time unless you bring them to that strategy specifically to do that. What I mean to say is she has a buster performance up one turn, MP performance up for one turn, which means you want to use your noble phantasm but also all your command cards turn into buster cards for one turn. So if you kill your enemies, you're wasting the opportunity of having all their buster cards. Or if you don't have your noble phantasm, you're wasting your best chance to blow them away with your noble phantasm with turning all your cards to buster. Now some people might see this as versatility. After all, if you level up all the way, it is a five turn cooldown, which isn't too bad, but in my opinion, since they're all one turn, I would almost lower this down to four. Especially because we have people like Okada Izo and Melt Lancer who have skills that actually loop into themselves or super low cooldowns, like three turns. Artoria is supposed to be the poster child of this series. So I think giving her something a little bit more busted than this would be great. It feels experimental, more so busted. It is good, but I feel like we could have made it a couple more turns, it would have been even better. And that's gonna be all the strengthening quests that we get, and that's gonna be everything for this. So let's go back to the other stuff, cause yes, there's even more things for this anniversary to talk about. Reward number nine is gonna be fantastic and really good for every one of you. So for every arrow completed during the main quest in this game, every arrow that you've completed in your game, you are getting St. Quartz Fragments. Not the node, but the arrows inside of the node. Upon completing, you're getting a St. Quartz Fragment for that. And this is retroactive up to Atlantis. So check this out. All of these St. Quartz Fragments, if you completed all of Arc 1, if you completed the Epic of Remnants, if you completed all the way up to Arc 2 up until this point, sorry, Actually, all the way up to Olympus this is even better. You get 1,046 Saint Quartz Fragments. That equals to 149 Saint Quartz on top of the 90 Saint Quartz that you get earlier. On top of all the, if you did all the free quests or did all the main story quests or did your strengthenings or your interlude, you get even more Quartz from that. That is so good. Fantastic. And to help you get there too, the AP is actually half off permanently all the way from Fuyuki to Atlantis. That is a permanent thing that they're adding because of this. So catch up if you haven't. This is the perfect reason too to get all these St. Quartz Fragments. Even the prologues in here. Come on, play the game, get free quartz. And the last thing for this 10 step is going to be the Lucky Bag Summoning Campaign, also known as the GSSR Banner. And if you want to hear more about this GSSR, just wait to the end of the video and I'll tell you more about it then. But wait! There's more going on! We have the new seasonal CE Idolmaker in the shop, which is Master Experience and Mystic Code Experience. 1% with one of them, but if you max them break it, that's 5%. So this is going to be stackable with your other CEs. Definitely something you want to grab if you have 5,000 mana prisms, which I know sounds like a lot. I get it. But with certain events coming up, like lottery events, mana prisms are going to be raining in if you farm it properly. And there are many resources to do so. So, definitely go get that if you can. But we also have the limited time exchanges of more command codes, command code openers, 10 more summoning tickets, 10 golden experience cards, and 30 of each attack, silver, and HP foe. 
Very nice here. Take advantage of that on top of the July refresh. And then we have the rare metamism exchange as well. You get another bond flame. So if you want to start going beyond bond level 10, you need one of these. And three more command code openers with a crystallized lore, two golden O's, HP and attack, and 20,000 rem points. Also, rare exchange. So take advantage of that if you have it. Totally here. 22 rare mana to get everything in this shop. As well as being added a new monthly item, a faux paw print. So if you want to get those faux paw prints, you're missing some, get them from the rare mana prism shop. Very good, very nice. We also have new costumes. New costumes for five servants. Arjuna with the fantastic monkey outfit here. That now that's not to be rude, but this monkey is cute as hell, and you'll see when you get that costume. Da Vinci Rider sporting the outfit from Arcade, looking fantastic and cute. Nero Claudius, our Emperor of Rome, looking very beautiful in a Roman garb. With Okada Ezo looking dapper in his fantastic Akama and Umbrella combination. Look at that sexy doggo. Wow. And finally, Paul Bunyan looking cute, fearsome, and adorable in this bunny Halloween outfit that I don't know how to describe. Still, these are new outfits that are just getting added that you can get. And upon completing the quest that you have, because yes, you get these from quests, you get a summoning ticket and some material drops. Like, come on, this is so free, so easy. Take advantage of this. Even if you don't have these services, do it for the summoning ticket. And hey, you might get them later. So go ahead and do that. And now we talk about one of the biggest things and the biggest reasons why this anniversary is gonna be fantastic and you're gonna to wanna to participate and roll on this day. Cause with this banner, we have Arturia Caster. Finally, everyone, she is here to be summoned. After two years of NA waiting patiently for Caster Arturia, she is here for you to get right now. And I know I have a lot of people who aren't really up on the meta. We have different type of players. You guys say, I can skip Caster Arturia. Let me stop you right there. Caster Artoria is the premier servant that you're gonna wanna roll for this year. If you cannot roll for anyone else, Castoria is literally the servant to do that. I talk about that in a video right here. Seriously, I go on for about five to 10 minutes. So, Castoria is the reason that you roll for this banner. CEs on it aren't too bad. But just getting one copy of Castor Adoria is good. She is by far one of the best casters in this game. She supports you so much. Focus so much on arts as well that like if you have any art support, any art servant, she is the one you need. She makes she makes Musashi Berserker better. She makes Vlad the Impaler better. She makes Tamamo better. Not because she buffs her, but because she finally has a partner to make our skills go well. Waver and that cop has been replaced. But that does not mean Waver isn't the best caster in the game. It's just Arturia Caster is so powerful. And the fact that she is limited in the banner, you need to roll for her. Waver at the very least you can get for free, but Caster Arturia? You need to get lucky, and I really hope that you guys have the courts, the funds, whatever available to you to get her now. In case you don't, she does have another banner next year, and the problem with that is there is a lot of good servants coming out next year. A lot. In every single slot. So I really don't think that that's a good time to wait, because if you did, you're going to be rolling every month between May and in September so I don't want you to do that if you can do it now please do it even me who's saving up for Saito Hajime am actually putting all my courts to Gajar Adoria because she's gonna take any account whale or newbie account to the next level to the next level seriously if I could show you her on my free account, I would. I have her on JP, and it's fantastic. I don't even have that many resources, and she saves me so much time. So please, guys, listen to me. Roll for her. 
leaves trust. Trust. That is the serving you need to roll for. And you know the funny thing? That's not even the only thing that's going on in July. We got one more thing that's gonna be happening in July that you need to be aware of. And I know I just got done saying you need to roll for Castoria, but I know a lot of you are gonna run a roll for this next servant. And that is because the Oku event is being rerun towards the end of July. Probably the middle of July, if this is to be believed. So yes, Kama is returning. Fantastic time too. You get all the CEs, you get the fantastic command codes, you get a chance to get Kama herself with this admittedly annoying quest. And I say that because of all of the 1 AP loading times of all the time dates. But, hey, understandable. And during this time as well, you will see uh, main quests even lowered further so you can catch up. Because yes, you do need to clear Lost Bell 3 to participate in the Oku rerun. So if you weren't able to do it the first time, please blitz through the story as best as you can. Clear Lost Belt 3 so you can take part of this because you get some fantastic materials and a chance to get Kama if you're interested. If you're broke and don't have any course for Kama, at the very least, there's a whole bunch of stuff in this event shop that's going to be helpful for you. So, please, take advantage of that and be aware of that because that will be the last thing you have to worry about in July. We will soon then have to worry about what's coming in August and more than likely, the summer event will be starting soon. Now I told you guys that I will go ahead and actually tell you about the GSSR and that's in the video right here. It's actually going to talk about the GSSR for the fifth anniversary and is actually breaking down what I feel is the best one for you. So go ahead, click that link, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you there.